Hello everybody, welcome to Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH and today's problem solving technique is Cost Volume Profit Analysis in a Multiple Product Line Setup or the one that you know as Sales Mix. So before you start listening to me, please download the handout that is provided to you uh, in the description box. Okay, so the link is in the description box. Okay, so let me read and analyze the problem for you first. Sky Castle Manufacturing Company sells three different products. Neon color phone jelly cases, privacy tempered glass, and charging cords. The entity sales constitute 70% jelly cases, 20% tempered glass, and 10% charging cords. So you are already being given of the sales mix percentage already. The selling price and variable cost information per unit are provided as follows. So, the problem has already given you the selling price for each of the uh, products. And the direct materials, they were an overhead, basically variable overhead, which will constitute your variable cost per unit. So, as you know, the starting point for any CVP analysis is the selling price and the variable cost per unit so that you can get your contribution margin per unit. Okay? So we start analyzing it by basically just doing a table, okay? So we start with, so the first product is actually the neon color phone jelly cases. So we write here jelly cases. For the jelly case. And then your tempered glass. And then the next one is your CC, <laughs> charging cords. Okay, then I'll write first the selling price for each of your uh, products. So the selling price for your jelly case is 300. And then for your tempered glass is 270. And for charging cords, that is 320. Okay, and then we have to deduct your variable cost per unit. We will be computing first the variable cost per unit for each of the products. So for your jelly cases, that's 90 materials, 70 labor, and 50 variable manufacturing overhead and SA, ex SA expense. So that is 210. And then for tempered glass, that's 100 plus 32 plus 30, which is 162. And for your charging cords, that is 80, 70, and 10, which gives you 160. Okay. Again, the starting point for any CVP analysis is knowing the contribution margin per unit. So, we get the difference of these three, and we have your contribution margin per unit. So, 300 minus 210, that is 90. And then 270 minus 162 gives you 108. And 320 minus 160 gives you 160. Now, it would be easier just to divide your fixed cost to your contribution margin per unit should this be a single product line analysis of CBP. However, we are working on a multiple product line setup. So what happens is you have to multiply it first to its sales mix ratio. Okay, so let's get the sales mix ratio from the problem for your jelly cases, that is 70%. And then for your tempered glass is 20%. And for your charging cords, that is 10%. When you multiply these two, what you will be getting here is what you call the weighted average contribution margin per unit okay so for jelly cases 90 times 70 percent that is 63 and then 108 times 20 percent that is 21.6 and 160 times 10 percent that is 60. now you have to add these three to get your weighted average contribution margin, which is 63 plus 21.6 plus 16, 100.6.
6. And from here, you will be applying the formula that you actually know in CVP analysis, which is just basically your fixed cost. And the fixed cost in your problem is 503,000 divided by your weighted average contribution margin of 100.6. This is your break-even point. However, this break-even point is expressed as a total of all of your product lines. So, 503,000 divided by 100.6 gives you 5,000 units. However, we need to know in these 5,000 units, how many should I sell in order to break even in terms of the jelly cases, 5,000 in terms of the tempered glass, and 5,000 in terms of the charging cords. So, simply use the sales mix ratio. So, for jelly cases, that will be 5,000 units times 70%. So, 5,000 times 0.7. That is 3,500 units. And then for your tempered glass, that is 5,000 units times 20%. 5,000 times 20%, 1,000 thousand units and for your cords or charging cords that is five thousand units times ten percent which is five hundred units if you actually get the total of this three five plus one four five plus five this is five thousand units so the problem actually asks you asks you about calculate for the break even point in units and in pesos. So for the units, this will be your answer. So in order to break even, the entity should sell 3,500 units of jelly cases, 1,000 units of tempered glass, and 500 units of charging cords. How will we be able to compute your break even point in peso sales? You just simply do it like this. Okay, so I'll make a table here again. And then your tempered glass, and then your charging cords, and I'll put here a total column. Okay, so now, how many should we sell in order to break even? We, th we have 3,500 units, 1,000 units, and 500 units for a total of 5,000 units. Let's get the selling price for each of them. For jelly case, is 300. So you multiply it by 300, which is your selling price. And then we also have 270 and 320. Now this is the answer for the second requirement. Okay? So 3,500 break even point in units times 300 break-even point in sales is 1,050,000. So for this one, 1,000 times 270, that is 270,000. And then, 500 times 320, that is 160,000. So this is your break-even point in terms of your sales. Now, we want to check if this break-even point in units and this break-even point in sales is actually the break-even point. We will be doing again the variable costing income statement for our company. Okay, so this is your starting point, which is your sales. I'll also get the total sales here. So 1,050,000 plus 270,000 plus 160. So that is 1,000,000. 480,000 for your total. Less your variable cost. Okay? So, 3,500, you multiply it to 210. I will be directly writing it here after I multiply. So, 3,500 multiplied by 210. 
that is 735,000. 1,000 times 162 is 162,000. And 500 times 160 is 80,000. Okay? Let's also get the total variable cost. 735,000 plus 162,000 plus 80,000 gives you 977,000. Okay? So this is now your contribution margin. 1,050,000 minus 735, that is 315,000. Then 270 minus 162,000, 108,000. And then 160,000 minus 80,000 is simply 80,000. You can just add this one or deduct this one, so it's the same. 1,040 minus 977 is 503,000. And then let's deduct your fixed cost. So as you can see, the fixed cost in the problem is actually 503,000. I can analyze it by product line. Because our fixed cost is always in total. So that is 503,000. And since at break even point, your contribution margin and fixed cost is the same. So your net income here should be zero. And we confirm that this is your break even point in units. And this is your break even point in peso sales. Okay? And that's our discussion for CBP analysis on multiple product line setup. Thank you and have a great day.